speaking of America, uh, they, the, the, the people behind the statue are very aware that they need to raise money and they also wanna raise awareness. So uh, as kind of a teaser, they send the torch to the, basically the Philadelphia's World Fair, which they call the Centennial Exposition, uh, celebrating America's expo uh, you know, centennial. And they plunk it down in the middle of a park and just untold hundreds of thousands of people observe it and you know for 10 cents they could get up into the into the into the torch so it was a good device in terms of raising awareness and getting people to anticipate the eventual arrival of the whole of the whole thing uh, a couple of years later uh, france has a world's fair the paris exposition of 1878 and they do the same thing they they put the head on display and it draws a huge amount of attention great great crowds come to uh, ascend the small set of stairs up into the crown and it does a great job of kind of promoting um, the statue as a you know coming attraction now, part of the deal was that the French people would raise the money and that this crew of experts would build and you know, craft the, the statue and then send it to America, but it needed a place to, to reside. And so over a brief period of time, there's a debate about whether it should go to Washington DC, whether it should go to Boston or Philadelphia. And event, I will spare you the details, but anyway, New York wins out and New York has a bunch of little islands right in their harbor, including Bedloe's Island. And that's chosen ultimately as the perfect site for the statue. America's biggest city. It's the great gateway in and out of America. So it makes a lot of sense. Um, so, but the problem was they didn't have a, the, the, the Americans needed to raise the money for the base. That was part of the deal. And so they're falling way short in raising funds. Enter uh, Joseph Pulitzer, you know, the enterprising attention grabbing uh, editor of the New York world. And he announces that uh, he's gonna push the fundraising, fundraising drive to completion. And he promises that if you give as little as a penny you will get your name in the Pulitzer newspapers. And it works. Over 120,000 people donate, some as little as a penny, but many people donate two, three, four, five, ten dollars $10, and it raises all the requisite money. And so once the funds were raised, uh, construction began uh, on the pedestal on Bedloe's Island, just out there in New York Harbor. Uh, the financing was secured uh, in August of 1885. The pedestal construction was finished in uh, 1886, the spring of 1886. And the statue arriving in hundreds of crates uh, begins to arrive in New York Harbor in June of 1885. So by mid 1885, this thing is definitely uh, going to happen. It gets a lot of attention to the assembly. This is now looking at it uh, on the American side as these various, very curious, large, large pieces begin to be assembled and hoisted into place around Eiffel's uh, skeletal structure. So uh, it's exactly what the, the people behind the statue wanted, which was, a ton of attention and anticipation. And to make a long story short, it is completed in the summer, is, is summer and fall of 1886 and unveiled uh, on October 28th, 1886. Uh, it is one of those spectacular events in American history, certainly in the 19th century, um, right up there with, you know, spanning the continent with the you know, transcontinental railroad or unveiling the Brooklyn Bridge, which had been unveiled just three years earlier. Uh, it's met with great, great fanfare. There are all the dignitaries in, uh, in the country, plus international dignitaries are there. There's millions of spectators, there's fireworks. It's a great, great celebration of, of the statue. Oh, and we should point out the title of the statue. Uh, if you've heard my previous lectures, you may have heard me talk about this. It's not the Statue of Liberty, it's Liberty Enlightening the World. So it has a very Republican small r message for the rest of the world. It's about encouraging the rest of the world to adopt a Republican form of government, get rid of their kings and queens and all of that stuff. So keep that in mind. Um, here's what some people, what various people had to say uh, on that day, on that great you know, day. Uh, President Grover Cleveland said, we will not forget that Liberty here has made her home. So Cleveland uh, is part of that, that lineup. Uh, whoops, so too, uh, the New York Times opined on the, on the topic. On our shores has been realized with all its imperfections, the most successful and hopeful of all the social systems that have grown up in the history of mankind. So kind of over the top uh, with New York Times summing up the you know, 